Welcome to the lecture series on reinforcement learning. In this lecture, we look at continuous input spaces and would like to use function approximation for modeling Q values. The overall aim is to get into the field of deep reinforcement learning. And today we will, today we will take first steps towards choosing action choices in a small network. In the end, it will be a deep multi-layer network. Today, we will start with a small network. And we'll ask several questions. How can we set up such a network? What is the error function? Normally, changes of weights are defined by an error function. What is this loss function for action learning? And then, how can we optimize the actual connection weights? And in doing so, We'll cover today temporal difference learning in the form of ver several variations of SARSA. And then if you think of such a chessboard, there are so many, many different states. How can we deal with a continuous or some other large state space? So these are the questions for today. So far, all the algorithms that we have considered are tabular. We build tables. For example, in SARSA or Q-learning, we build a table, Q of SA, for all states S and actions, for all pairs, state and actions. And we have discrete states and actions. For TD learning of V values, we build a table V of S, but again, for all states, all discrete states. Now, this poses a potential problem because already for quite simple problem, you have many state action pairs. You have many, many different states. And then there is something a bit strange because all these table entries are sort of considered as independent. Of course, by the learning algorithm SARSA or by TD learning, we try to implement a self-consistency between neighboring V values or neighboring Q values where neighbor are meant in a temporal sense. But there's no intrinsic smoothness conditions. Now let's make two remarks. The first one is, in many physical problems, the input space is naturally continuous. For example, in a video game where you want to land a little moon lander, a little satellite on, a, on, on the moon between the flagpoles, well, the space is continuous, even the actions might be continuous. Now that's not true for games. Their actions are discrete and the state space is discrete. However, the state space is so big that it's practically impossible to build a table of all states or even of all state uh, action pairs. And so something has to be done. And the idea is that we use a neural network or some other representation with parameters, a model, and uh, then we adjust the parameters of the model, we change the connections, so that in the output we would then have the Q values for different actions given the current state S. So the state S is encoded in the hidden layers of the neural network. Let's start with a super simple example. This is the Swiss mountain car example. Famous example, I've been living in Switzerland for more than 20 years. We have these nice yellow postal cars and now we also have very steep valleys. And many decades ago, you can imagine that the engine of the mountain car was not strong enough to move up in a single, single go. So what it would do is to move up a little bit and then take the momentum, go back, and then finally go again up in the next round. So that's the idea. The engine is not strong enough to go directly. And to keep things simple, suppose we only have two actions, full speed, 
full power to the right or full power to the left. Okay, and it's a one-dimensional problem in space. So I only have one coordinate x. But now let's think about the state space for the action choice, for the, the state space that are relevant for the action choices of the car. In fact, that should be two-dimensional because if the car is here, it matters whether it's currently still moving upward or whether it's moving downward. If it's still moving upward, you would like to take more height and so go full power to the left. Whereas if you, if you are moving downward, then you want to take full power to the right. So the point is that the input space is in fact two-dimensional. There's this first coordinate, which is the position. And then there's the other co coordinate, which would be the derivative, the momentary speed of the mountain car. And to make things simple, suppose that in each of these dimensions, I have a discretization of three. So I would have nine different states. Good. And now I want to build Q values, a table of Q values for the first action. So you can imagine this, that now at each of these discrete states, I built a Q value. And then I have to do the same for action number two. So I have a table for action one with nine entries, and I have another table for action A2 with also nine entries. And now let's work on these entries. So if this is the table for Q of S A1, then, and this for Q of S A2, then I can say table entries, I plot just in the vertical direction, and you see some bars are small, some other bars are bigger. And so this is my a visual representation of, the, of my nine table entries. Now this looks interesting because I know that in reality, this position is continuous. So I imagine that if at this position here, it was good to take action A1, Q of S A1 is high, then at the neighboring position, it should also be good because sort of the physics of the thing implies that neighboring positions should have similar solutions. So instead of going from a discretization of nine to 91 or something, let's go directly to the continuum and imagine that depending of my on my position and depending on my speed, y, the Q value changes smoothly. And then this would be the dependence of the state in the form of a function for action A1, Q of S A1. And I would have something very similar for the second action. I would have a function Q of S for A2. So it's a function of the state given A2. And now, how can we describe such a smooth function? And let me work a little bit on a little representation, a representation that is using radial basis functions. So I have here my two dimensional situation here, but let's for the sake of simplicity, just write this, visualize this as a one dimensional state space. So if I have one horizontal axis for the states, and then I will have a second axis, which is vertical, which in the end should be the Q values. And now let's start with the idea of a little discretization. So I have my discrete positions, S1, S2, S3, S4. And let's put at each of these locations a little radial basis function. So it would give a picture which is roughly like this. And now I can scale these basal radius functions. 
radial basis functions. I can say this was amplitude one here, but now I give a certain amplitude to this one here. So it would be just scaled with this amplitude factor, which I call W1. And then the same for state S2. I have a W2, a scaling factor. For S3, I have some scaling factor. For S4, I have some scaling factor. And then I combine these, I add these up so that in the end it gives some smooth function. So mathematically, what am I doing? I'm writing this Q of A2 as a function of S as a sum over my different positions k and then I have these radial basis functions phi of s minus sk that's one of these little basis functions and then I sum them up with additional weighting factors wk and so this gives me a smooth function this gives me this smooth function as a function of the state s but that was now for one of these actions q of a2 and s and i would have something similar for action a1 so i should really use this index a2 and say this is a representation for action 2 so my weights would be those for this representation of action two. And then I would have another one, Q of, Q of S and A1, where I would have weights W1 and K. And here I had a summation over four different positions, but it could be 25 positions or 234 or whatever you want. So there's a direct way with these radial basis functions to go from a discrete representation to a smooth representation and these phi here are called basis functions if you choose them circularly symmetric it's called radial basis functions and they form a basis and then i have these linear coefficients which are my free parameters and these are the weights they would correspond to weights in artificial neural networks but this is not a neural network this is a radial basis function network.